the different kinds of categories of stem cells. And I've tried to use some pictures to help you remember all this language. So the first one we call adult stem cells. Now this is a photograph of a photographer who is so dedicated and so specialised to her craft, she actually has her camera uh, inked onto her arm there, tattooed onto her arm. It's a dedicated, she's a dedicated person. And that's how you think about stems, adult stem cells. They're dedicated to a certain job. Then there are what we call embryonic stem cells, and if you like, you could think of them as a little bit like chameleons, or I saw a cartoon that said, um, uh, it was a parent said to the embryonic stem cell, you can be anything you want when you grow up. And that's what embryonic stem cells are. They're capable of being any kind of cells. So they're chameleons, they can change from one kind to another. <laughs> so if we have a look at uh, a little video so you can see what they are. <laughs> Following fertilization, the developing embryo contains a group of cells known as the inner cell mass that will eventually go on to form all tissues of the body. However, at this early stage of development, these cells have not yet committed to become a specific type of cell and are said to be in an undifferentiated state. If the cells of the inner cell mass are isolated, they can grow indefinitely in a plastic dish and maintain this undifferentiated state. These cells are known as embryonic stem cells, or ES cells. Like cells in the developing embryo, ES cells retain the ability to form any type of cell in the adult body. Thus, ES cells are said to be pluripotent. By studying the signals required to control how ES cells develop into specific cell types, scientists may be able to develop therapies capable of restoring damaged tissues. Now, I think of these as copycat cells. They, in all intents and purposes, they function like embryonic stem cells, but in fact, they're derived from adult sources. So um, back, because the embryonic stem cells have important moral and ethical debate about their use, uh, the US president dictated that um, scientists not use embryonic stem cells and put their brains to inventing a new kind of cells that could give the benefit of embryonic stem cells but didn't have the moral and ethical complications of those. And uh, a very clever Japanese scientist who won the Nobel Prize for this work invented iPS cells. So what they do is they can take uh, just your natural skin cells off your skin and deprogram them backwards in the dish to the equivalent status of embryonic stem cells. So that's why I think of them as copycat kind of cells, right? So here's what they do. Most of the cells in our bodies are not stem cells. For example, blood and skin cells have become specialized to perform a specific function in the body by a process known as differentiation. That's normally not reversible. However, if some adult cell types are taken, grown in plastic dishes, and given specific genetic instructions, over time, a small number of these cells will reverse from their differentiated state and develop the ability to re-differentiate into any cell type in the body. This newfound ability is known as pluripotency, and therefore these cells are known as induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPS. The creation of IPS cells from individual patients may one day allow us to develop replacement tissues that are a perfect genetic match to the patient. In addition, the creation of IPS cells from patients with specific diseases will allow scientists to develop new drugs to treat a wide variety of disorders. <laughs> 